I'm Jason and this is Build Apps Without Code, where I teach non-technical people like myself how to build apps without writing one line of code. A few things to mention today. The channel reached 100 subscribers. Thank you so much. Actually hard to believe that um, over 100 of you are willing to watch me talk. I'm forever grateful though. Uh, this brings me to my next point. I am committing myself to do more of these videos moving forward at least once per week. Uh, so please hold me accountable. Let me know in the comments if I'm slacking. Comments motivate me actually, seriously. So yeah, let me know. Once a week is my goal. Uh, finally, if you've been enjoying the videos and you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Uh, this way you'll never miss one. And there should be a subscribe button somewhere on the screen. Just um, give it a little little clickety click there and uh, we're golden. So moving on to today's video. I thought we were done with Airbnb, the Airbnb bubble clone that we've been working on. Um, but a few you mentioned in the last one that you wanted more Airbnb. So um, we're going to do another one. Another one. In this video, we're going to look at Airbnb reviews. Uh, and this could be reviews for any marketplace, really. Um, but let's take a look at Airbnb and I'll show you what I'm talking about. And um, let's be flexible. Oh, that's an interesting place right there. Kind of looks like a boat. Some of the features we're going to work on today are the ability to write a public review and a private review for a property. Uh, in this case, let's scroll down and see the reviews for this boathouse. Here's a few public reviews right here. Uh, so we're going to yeah work on the ability to write one of those. We're also going to work on the ability for the user to give a one to five star rating on things like uh, cleanliness, communication, check-in, and others. Um, we're going to have the ability to see all previous reviews when looking at a property. So not only are we giving the ability to write one, but also to see them on our property page like we can right here. And uh, the ability to see a star rating average and like a, a dynamic number of reviews for a property. Uh, so here, cleanliness is 4.9. This is an average um, from all the reviews put into this spot. 4.9 for a boathouse. 4.9 across the board for a boathouse. 4.8 value. Um, so we're going to work on that functionality and also make our number of reviews dynamic so that that number goes up every time a new review gets put in. That's what we're doing today. Um, like I said, th this is reviews for Airbnb, but you could uh, you could take this the lessons in this video and use it on any type of uh, marketplace app. So let's get started. Okay, first thing we need to think about here is our data types. Now, if we go over to our data section, you remember from our previous videos, we added a bookings data type and a properties data type. We're going to need a reviews data type as well. And you might ask, why not just put it into the properties since the reviews are for the properties. And the reason is because you can have multiple reviews per one property. So our property data type or table is a list of our properties, but our reviews are related to a property, but they're their own list. So here we're going to put in a new type for reviews, and we're going to need some fields. Now I created this Notion document here, which lists out a few of the fields that we're going to need for the review table. And I also created one for this entire series. Uh, so all the data types that we've used so far, uh, the fields and the field type. And that's going to be available. I'll give you the link at the end of this video or it's in the description. It's going to be available for free for you to download. Uh, so the first thing we'll need for this review table is the property field. This is going to relate each review to a property. So we're going to create a new field for property and the field type is going to be properties. Here you can select a different data type so I can relate it back to that table. The next one we'll need is public review and private review and these are both going to be text.
And we need a rating for cleanliness, communication, check-in, accuracy, location, and value. And we'll talk about why we need those in a sec. And those are integers, one to five. And we also need a, um, a field called is recommended, yes or no. Do they recommend the property or not? Okay, the first thing we need to think about is data types. So let's head over to data. So we're gonna need a new type called reviews. And over here, I created this uh, Notion document here that gives us a list of some of the fields that we're gonna add today to this review table. I also created a separate Notion document uh, with all of the data types and fields and field types that we use in this whole series. Uh, so that is available to you for free. Uh, the link's in the description and on the screen. I created a separate Notion document just like this one, uh, but with all the data types and fields that we've used so far in this video series. Uh, so I'll put the link somewhere on the screen and in the description, and um, you can use that to grab it for free. So let's add a couple of these fields. We're going to need property, public review, and private review, and we'll leave it at that for now. So the field type for property is going to be properties. So I'm allowed to choose another data type in uh, the database to relate it to. So here we're going to choose which property does this review belong to. We're going to have a field called private review. That's going to be text. This is going to be a review that's for the hosts specifically. And uh, we're going to also have a public review. And if we look back on Airbnb here at our houseboat, this will be ones that show up on the page here that anyone can see. We need to have a way to actually write a review. Um, now Airbnb has locked this down so you can only write a review if you have actually stayed at this location recently. For our sake, we're just gonna put a button on the screen that opens a pop-up. So we're gonna need a way to allow the user to write a review. Now Airbnb has locked this down so you can only actually write a review here if you stayed at this place recently which I haven't, unfortunately. I would love to stay at the boathouse for, um, oh, look, it's on sale, $218 a night, but I don't have that kind of money. Uh, for our sake, we're just gonna have a button that says leave a review uh, right on our property page here. We'll make it open a pop-up that allows them to put in the private review, the public review, and a few star ratings. So we're gonna take um, our page here and make it a little bit bigger so we can fit some review stuff at the bottom. So the height, we'll change that to 1500. And that gives us some more space down here. And we have this, this group here, group center. So we'll bring that all the way down. And we have one more here, group center margin. We'll bring that one down as well. Remember we use that to give ourselves a little bit of padding. Uh, so I'm gonna go over to my elements here and we'll drag this button on the screen. Uh, maybe we'll change the style just a little bit. So what's gonna happen when you click this button? We wanna show a pop-up on the screen. So over here on the left, there is a container called pop-up. Um, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to make it a reusable element. Uh, so if you click up here on the page, right here is the reusable elements that we have available to us already, and, we're, and we can create more. Um, basically what these are are just elements that you can reuse on different pages throughout the app. So I want to use it, I want to put this pop-up as a reusable element in case there's somewhere else I want to use this pop-up, not just on this page. Uh, so if I say add a new reusable element, I can call it new review. This is going to be blank. And make this a little bit bigger. 
And if I click into it, um, I have the option to set the type of element, and I want it to be a pop-up. So that's going to allow us to use that as a pop-up. And the type of content is going to be reviews, because we're going to be creating a review with this pop-up. And let's head back to our property page. So when we click this button, we want to open that pop up. Make sense? Okay, so I want to show the reusable element pop up that we're building. So I can use element actions and then show. When I go to choose an element here, I don't see the reusable element that we just created. We called it new review. And the reason is because we haven't actually put it on the screen yet. Uh, so let's go back to design and on the left here if we scroll all the way down the bottom here We have reusable elements and there it is new review. So I'm just gonna toss it on the screen And that's all we need to do there. So now if we go back to our workflow We should have that right at the top new review So we're gonna show that pop-up all right, let's try it out So we're gonna click Leave a review, and there it is. Leave a review, and you can click, and it'll just click outside, and it'll just exit. Now we have one problem here. Um, we don't know what the property is when we're inside this pop-up. This pop-up doesn't know what property we were looking at. We were looking at salty blue, but it doesn't know where which property we're leaving a review for. I'm actually gonna change this to be type of content properties instead uh, so we can load that property onto the pop-up if I put a text object on the screen and we set it to the parent groups properties name this should show us the name of our property but here we are sitting in salty blue 2 and we click leave a review doesn't show anything so we haven't got our data into this pop-up yet um, there's one more thing we got to do to make this happen back in workflow for um, our properties page when you click the leave a review button we're showing the pop-up uh, we also need to send data there so if we search for display data in a group pop-up that's what we're looking for. Um, so in the new review element, we are going to display the parent groups property. Uh, so the group that the button is in, we're going to grab that property, put it into the, the element. And we're going to do that step first, actually. So we'll drag it first. And then we're going to show it. So we're going to send the data and then show it. Let's see if that works. There we go. Salty blue too. So now we have the property in the pop-up. We can also do something like this. Leave a review for insert dynamic data, get the parent group's properties and name. Maximize that. Try it one more time. Leave a review for Salty Blue 2. It even rhymes. Let's do private review and public review. We're going to need text input, multi line. And uh, we'll need a submit button. So we'll drag another button onto the screen here. How are we going to actually submit this? We need to add a few actions to this button. Data things, create a new thing. We're creating a thing in the review table. The type is reviews. The property can come from the parent group now that we have that data in there. Private review will come from the private review text input. And public review will come from the public review text input. 
Private review. Thanks for everything. Public review. Salty Blue 2 was much saltier than Salty Blue 1. I don't know. Submit review. Okay, so what just happened? It created the thing, so we can go and check and make sure that that actually worked. Here it is. Salty Blue 2 was much saltier than Salty Blue 1. That's the property ID. Looks like we actually have an issue here because our private review and our public review are the same. That's not what we meant to do. So let's see what we did wrong and see how we have the public review uh, input used for both private and public. That's why it happened there. So let's just change this to private. We have private review, we have public review. If we look at Airbnb though, there's also these ratings here. We have cleanliness, communication, check-in, all 4.9s, accuracy, location, value. So we're going to need to put in a star rating for each of these. How do we allow the user to choose stars from 1 to 5? We could do it manually. Um, we could just put star icons on and based on which one you clicked, we can store different values. Um, but there is a plugin for this, which makes it much easier, and it's free, so I would recommend just using the plugin. Um, so back over here, we're going to go to Plugins. Add a plugin, and this one's called maybe Star Rating. Let's just search. Yeah, here it is. Uh, so it's by Bubble. It's free. Let's you add a star rating input to your page and enables users to enter rating values by a simple click. It's exactly what we want. So before you do something manually like this, I would always recommend checking the, the plugins marketplace and see if there's anything there that uh, you could use instead. So now that we've added that plugin, we can see it right here. So it shows up in our element list. So I'm just going to grab this star rating element here and throw it on the screen. And let's see what options we have. We have the minimum rating. I would say one would be minimum. The maximum five is good. Steps. I uh, will just say one instead of 0 0.5 so that you just select one, two, three, four, five instead of like 3.5 or 4.5. Star size, extra small. So you can set the size here. I think extra small is good. So let's just throw that on the screen. We'll put a, a caption there. If we look back over here, the first one is cleanliness. So we'll start there. So now you can see I can choose one, two, three, four, or five. And if I click it, then it stays. All right, let's copy this cleanliness and add the rest. Okay, we've added these to the screen. Now we want to be able to put them into the review table. So we haven't added those fields yet. So let's go to data, data types, reviews, and back on our Notion document here, we have these cleanliness rating, communication rating, check-in rating. Those are the ones we need to add. They're going to be number fields. And we'll add this last one, is recommended. That's going to be a yes, no field. So they can only select do they recommend it or not. We can now choose star ratings for each of these. But when we click submit, it's not going to insert that into the table yet. So back in our workflows, submit button. We have our new fields now. So we want here's our new fields, accuracy rating, check-in rating, communication rating. So we want to get the value from the star rating, right? 
So that's going to give us the 1 to 5 value that the user selected. All right, let's submit a review and make sure that works. So let's say salty blue cleanliness. Communication was solid though. Checking was good. Accuracy definitely was salty. Location, meh. Value, meh. Actually, let's make sure these are all going into the right field. So let's just do one, two, three, four, five, five, sure. And submit. And we'll take a look at that data. One, two, three, four, five, five. Good. All right, I'm back. Uh, if you didn't notice, outfit change. It's actually a different day now. Uh, kids and life got in the way yesterday of me finishing this video. Um, so I'm going to stop this video for now and continue this reviews function functionality on the next one because uh, there's a lot more to do here. For example, we have this thumbs down and thumbs up button. Uh, so we're going to set this up to track if the guest recommends the property or not. And that's going to round off our new review pop-up here. And over on Airbnb, we still have to actually add these reviews to the property screen. Uh, so the username, the date, and the public review so that anyone viewing the property can see all the public reviews. Uh, we'll, follow, we'll follow that up by calculating the average scores for each property. So cleanliness, communication, check-in. These, uh, these scores here are averages of all the reviews that have been put in. So we're going to have to um, create some functionality there to actually calculate those numbers and dynamically show them on screen. Um, and finally, we want to make these numbers dynamic. The overall rating and the number of reviews. So that as new reviews get put in, that number automatically updates. Um, and don't forget, I created a public Notion document with all the data types, fields, and field types that we've used so far. Um, you can go to buildappswithoutcode.com slash Airbnb clone. Put in your name, email address, and I will email that to you. Absolutely free. Um, I appreciate you watching, guys. If you liked the video, please subscribe. And like I said before, I'm going to start trying to post weekly. Uh, so much more no-coding fun to come. Peace and love. Thank you. Bye.